Well, I, I'm a big fan of laparoscopic inguinal hernia surgery because I've had it performed on myself and I perform over 100 cases of these a year. It's very important for patients with hernias to come and get assessed by an expert because the hernias can get bigger, um, more painful, restrict exercise and work activities. Um, and in extreme cases, they can get bits of bowel trapped in them. So if you have a hernia, it's very important that you come and see an expert such as myself to, to get the hernia assessed and fixed if necessary. Um, inguinal hernia repair is performed under a general anaesthetic as a day case operation. Um, it takes about 45 minutes and there are three small incisions made below the belly button. Um, the relevant areas will be shaved on the day by the surgeon so the patients don't have to worry about doing that beforehand. Uh, in the top one of the three incisions a keyhole camera is inserted and the abdomen's in insufflated with gas to create space for me to do the operation um, and then basically the hernia is a weakness uh, with a protrusion through the groin and that protrusion is pulled back into the abdomen and then where the weakness is in the groin a 15 by 10 centimeter mesh is uh, placed over the weakened area allowing this area to be strengthened and for the body's own tissues to grow into it to strengthen it further. Um, these are not meshes that are reported negatively in the press. Those tend to be pelvic floor meshes in gynecological surgery and, um, and, and these are different meshes. So that I have two of these meshes inside my groins and I've had absolutely no problem with them and I was playing sport a week later. Um, so at the end of the operation, local anaesthetic is left both in, inside the abdomen and in the area of the three small wounds. The gas is removed from the abdomen. The wounds are closed with dissolvable sutures and biological skin glue. So you don't need any sutures removed. Afterwards, you can shower normally, wash normally from the next day. You need to refrain from work and making financial decisions for 24 hours after a general anaesthetic um, and then you can get exercising the next day get walking and um, make sure that the groin doesn't stiffen up and and um, all being well you can get playing sport within a few days so that's the real benefit the the old-fashioned opening or hernia repair uh, involves sewing a mesh into the groin muscles which can be pretty painful for about a month and um, it has a higher incidence of chronic pain that persists for over a year as well so um, where possible uh, we, we always try to do a laparoscopic repair. A laparoscopic inguinal hernia surgery is keyhole surgery laparoscopic basically in layman's terms means keyhole surgery through small incisions. Um, the benefits of laparoscopic surgery are reduced pain both in the short term and the long term, a faster recovery time, a uh, shorter time to return to work and exercise and hobbies such as gardening and sport and gym. Um, it's day case surgery, it's a general anaesthetic um, and it's less painful because uh, the repair doesn't involve sewing a mesh into the groin muscles as, as in the old fashioned open hernia surgery um, and, and that takes longer to recover from and, and is proven to be associated with uh, higher incidence of chronic pain in, in open hernia surgery. I've had laparoscopic inguinal hernia surgery myself and I'm, I'm a, a big fan of it and I was playing sports a few days later. Yeah, there are two types of uh, laparoscopic inguinal hernia surgery. Um, the favoured one that I perform is the TEP, T-E-P, which stands for Total Extra Peritoneal repair so the space that I operate in to fix the hernia is uh, one 
layer above the abdominal cavity. So I'm not actually in amongst the bowels and the big blood vessels in the abdominal cavity. Um, so it's an extra peritoneal repair and that's regarded as safer than um, being in the abdominal cavity around the bowel and the big blood vessels. Um, the second form is the TAP, T-A-P-P, which stands for transabdominal preperitoneal repair. Um, and that involves the camera being inside the abdominal cavity along with the bowel and the big blood vessels. Um, the mesh potentially is more likely to be in contact with the bowel, which you don't want. You have to cover the defect where you place the mesh um, in the groin and try and make sure that the peritoneum covers the mesh so it's not in contact with the bowel because if it gets stuck onto the bowel, that can be extremely problematic. Um, so when, when this surgery started up in Guildford about 20, 25 years ago, they started with the tap and then they realized that the TEP was safer and they moved across to the TEP and that's the preferred method that, that I use for safety concerns uh, in my inguinal hernia repairs. Um, so keyhole minimally invasive surgery, broadly speaking, um, is that the benefits are that um, it's less painful both in the short term after the surgery and in the long term there is a higher incidence of chronic pain and nerve injury in open inguinal hernia surgery open inguinal hernia surgery involves sewing a mesh into the groin muscles and, and this is pretty painful certainly for three or four weeks after the surgery um, the patient's quite restricted in their mobility they take longer um, to get back to work, to get back to sport, to get back to hobbies like gardening. Um, and it, it's a longer recovery. So the, the benefits of the minimally invasive laparoscopic repair are it's less painful in the short and long term, and it's a quicker recovery, quicker return to work, quicker return to sport. An ideal candidate for keyhole surgery would be, um, it, we can't do it on patients that have had a radical prostatectomy. So, so men that have had major surgery for prostate cancer, that would exclude them from a keyhole repair. And also if they've had sort of major abdominal surgery with a big incision up the midline, which we call a laparotomy in surgical terms, um, that would also probably exclude them from having a laparoscopic repair. You're looking for someone that is well motivated, um, someone that's keen to get back to exercise and hobbies. Um, it is performed under general anaesthetic, so you need someone that's going to be cardiovascularly and respiratory wise fit enough for a general anaesthetic um, rather than a local anaesthetic. Um, we are wanting patients who are presenting for surgery before the hernia becomes so big that it's sort of gone down through the groin into the scrotal area um, because that is, is not really conducive to a laparoscopic repair. So, so those sort of things, patients that haven't had uh, major prostate cancer surgery that are fit for a general anaesthetic whose hernias don't go into the scrotum who are well motivated and, and keen to get back to activity as soon as possible. Uh, for a quick recovery, so um, the next day after, I, yeah, I didn't feel any pain after my inguinal hernia repairs, so I didn't need any analgesia. I got myself mobile, went out on a decent walk, the next day and then built it up over the next couple of days and then I, I was playing sport again um, within a week so um, we want people that take the analgesia if they require it if they don't then then even better um, but they get up and walking the next day they can shower normally because there are dissolvable sutures and skin glue there are no dressings um, and they're keen to to get back to 
their hobbies, their gym, their exercises, their work as soon as possible. And they're, they're not sitting at home on the sofa um, trying to, to leave it as long as possible before they become active again. So well-motivated patients. Really.